Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we are once again working on some house projects, specifically in our kitchen, because we have been in the middle of our kitchen renovation for the last several months. So we first started by cutting down our kitchen island into a single level that made such a huge difference. And then we got new countertops, as you can see. We also went through and added like beadboard and trim around the island just to make it more custom and also fix some of the issues that our current cabinets have because that wasn't in the budget to get all new cabinets or anything. And then very recently we got the entire kitchen painted. So we went with white dove on the exterior cabinets and then on the island we went with evergreen fog which ties in with our built-ins over here. So we love doing that. But today we are going to be doing like the final push on our kitchen renovation. So we are going to be adding over and under cabinet lighting to kind of give a little ambiance in here. And then also I'm going to be refinishing these stools to match the ones that I got from Facebook Marketplace a few weeks ago. So we are going to sand those down, paint them, and then even though they don't match fully, they will totally look like they go together. We have a few other projects around the house, but my favorite one, the one I'm most excited about, is we are doing our backsplash today. I think we're planning to do a herringbone pattern, and I think it's gonna turn out incredible. So we have a ton to get done. Let's get into it. I wanna hear you say it. Yeah. Okay, so our first order of business is Kyle is going to be working on installing the under cabinet lighting and upper cabinet lighting. I was actually, I started off looking for LED bars that you could put underneath, but we have these light strips above these cabinets up here and they make a pretty cool glow and they're pretty easy to work with. They just have a sticky back. You just plug them in, stick the back on, you're good to go. Anywhere that there's a copper connection, whoops, a copper connection like that, you can just cut it with scissors. So all we're gonna do is plug it in. There's an outlet up top that works on a switch from down here, and we're just gonna plug it in and then stick this to the to the back side of the cabinet on the top, and boom, we're done. Should take maybe 15 minutes. Yeah, to do the, yeah. at least the top one. To do the, yeah, the top one, the bottom ones are basically the same idea, but you have to cut the covers a little bit. But the biggest problem up there is that there's so much dust, <laughs> it's disgusting. So this won't stick if it's dusty. All right, let's get to cleaning. I wonder how long this one's been up here. That one's probably from our kids. Makes you wonder how long this stuff has been up here. I that know. definitely is That's not from ours. before us. Yeah. Good. You like that? Yeah. Yeah. I like it. Okay, so what we're doing here is we have an LED light strip that runs all the way across the front. And then we have this little sideways piece here, but I don't want to put LED lights there because it'll make a weird shadow on the ceiling. We're going to cut our LED light strip, take a wire, run it along that, and then put another LED light strip in the front. So that's all that we're doing here. And so basically this piece <clears throat> is like the connector that right connects it so you don't like replug anything in but you don't have lights coming out of it yep exactly so we cut the wire to whatever length we want you stick it in close it <laughs> pinch, uh, it real tight. pinch it real tight 
So now that's good, and then we do the same thing on this side. Take the two wires, stick them in, and then here's our connector. We take our LED light strip, our long one, and we'll stick it into this end, and then we'll take the other LED light strip that goes for that part, stick it in this end, and boom. Cool. Good to go. Sunset slow, hey, you know you should stay for the night. Oh, okay, ready? There we go. Hey, that looks very nice. Okay. And we're gonna do the same thing down on, on the bottom. And we're gonna do the same thing over here and then on the bottom in the butler's pantry. I like that, looks really nice. Yeah. I'm super excited to do the bottom because I've kind of mentioned this, but do you see like how much brighter this counter is? Like it's a more warmer tone than on the exterior. And it's because these lights right here are like a warm light. And so, and same with those, like those are kind of warmer. And so it's, I think just going to give like a nice glow right here and also just make the counters look a little bit warmer, which is like our favorite. Cause this might be love. It's a feeling that I can't get rid of. So just okay, so if you don't connect these LED strips with those like connectors, then you have to buy a whole new set. So we are having to get like multiple sets. Like we have one for the top cabinets, one for the bottom over there. And then since this area is kind of a shorter area, we're just gonna do one. But we were trying to figure out like ways to nicely connect it, going from the top of the cabinets to the bottom that'll look really nice. Kyle already taped this piece up here along the top. And then to get to the bottom of the cabinets, we actually have like this dead space in here. You don't see it from the front because it's like covered really nicely. It is just going to drop behind this little panel right here and it'll pop out right here in this hole. And then Kyle is just gonna drill like one tiny little notch right here, make him go right along this way. And then we'll have under cabinet lights and over cabinet lighting all with one set. And there is our cord. So this will be the connector and then Kyle will <laughs> put that to the new LED, so, LED strips. Actually what we can do, we can just put a little hole right here. Yeah. And then we'll just poke it through right there. Cool. <laughs> So that piece is all connected. But now we have the bottom parts of the cabinet right here. So Kyle's just gonna use, what is this called? A multi-tool? Oh, multi-tool, yep. And so he's just going to like notch it out kind of. That way we can keep the strip going along this back wall. Yeah, we don't wanna take also, it all the way out, but we'll just cut, cut a little notch in it. At first we were just gonna stick them to the bottom of the cabinet, just like like you would think. Like flush like yep, this. Just, just stick them up to the bottom. But here, I'll turn this on, you can see. Do you see the reflection off the countertop? Yeah. You can see all the little dots, and so we wanted to avoid that. If you take and you stick them to the inside of this right here, then the reflection goes away. Yeah. Or goes away-ish for the most part. Right, well I think it pretty much does. It so pretty much goes Then away. it just kind of like shines against the back. Yep. And then, yeah. It's a yeah. little more subtle too that way, right. which would be nice. That's so pretty. It makes the kitchen way more warm. I actually feel like it kind of makes the cabinets feel less stark. I don't think that it's a stark white paint anyway, but I just, I love it. So, so pretty. And if we want to, the reason I got these is if we want to put in dimming switches, these are dimmable. Mm -hmm. So if they're too bright, you can... You know, like in the evening, this would be the perfect light. Yeah. Uh, All right. Nice. So now we'll do this one next. Okay, yeah. actually we have a very, very, very minor hiccup. Like super minor compared to the hiccups we usually have. Yeah. But Kyle needs more... Oh, I literally don't have one to show you because we used our last one. But the connectors. Like more connector pieces. Basically, we're going to do the lights, but there's no lip to do it underneath here and make it not show. And so he's going to do like a connector along here and then continue on right there. Okay, 
All right, so Kyle's going to go get the connector. While he's doing that, I'm gonna start working on these stools. I'm just going to do the same thing. So I'm gonna sand down the seat, paint the body of it black, and even though they are very different, these ones are backless, so it'll look really nice and clean, and they'll end up looking like they totally match because their finishes will be the same. So the first thing, I'll need to take off the seat itself. I'm just going to sand both of the stools out with the 60 grit sandpaper so it's like really coarse and rough and then once I get that done then I'm gonna go in with some 220 grit sandpaper and that will make it super nice and smooth and just soft to the touch go and grab some air now I try to pick myself up nothing's wrong with me yet all right, this is what we have so far. So this one is all done. I mean, we'll need to do like poly on this, but this is what it was before. It wasn't bad before, like it was actually in really good shape. It just is not the style we're going for. We're going for like the more modern look. Now we just have to do the same thing to this guy. Kyle is back and I think we decided not to do anything underneath the microwave because we do have this light and like we'll have residual light coming off of the rest of the inner cabinets so it'll light the stove anyway. It is very easy to add or take away from these lights because of all the little connectors. So if we decide to do something like that later on, that's totally gonna be easy. So now for this, we have the LED strip along the bottom ridge, and then in here, he has a connector, and he just drilled right through here, and then we're just going to have it go along the bottom of the microwave, and then come out on this side with this connector wire, and then we'll continue on with the LED strip. We have... The cabinet lighting all put in other than in the butler's pantry we don't. Kyle had to run to the store really quick because that one is just a little bit different. It's set up just a little bit different. But while he's the way, we are going to paint the backless bar stools. So I am using the Beyond Paint again and we're using the color Licorice. I love this stuff so much. So let's go ahead and shake it up, get it opened and pour it out. Alright, if you have been a part of the channel for a while, you probably already know my spiel about Beyond Paint, but I have been using them for... I don't know, months and months and months, and I've used them on projects in Montana. I use them in all of our bathrooms so far, and I've used them on furniture. Like the list just goes on and on, and every single time I use Beyond Paint, I am just more and more impressed. It's amazing because you don't have to sand anything down. You don't have to strip anything off. You just clean up the surfaces, and then you just go ahead and paint it right on. And the finish ends up looking super professional. And now that we've had it in our home for months and months, I can say that it really does hold up well. Kyle got back and I don't know if you guys can actually tell, but he went ahead and put a dimmer on the lights so they're a little bit less harsh. So in here we have a little bit different situation. We have the stair landing up above. We don't have a plug switch up there like we did up on these sides. 
And so he's going to actually have to use this plug and we are just going to run it up through the cabinet. We'll end up putting it to like the top area and it'll just kind of live up there. So it'll still look seamless. You won't really see anything other than you'll see, you know, one little plug going into the cabinet, but otherwise it'll be basically all the same. All right, Kyle finished up the cabinet lights over there. I have the final coat on these, and the only thing left to do is put away our paint so that we don't spill it all over the floors. And then I need to put some poly on the seats, and then I think we're gonna call it a day because it's like almost dinner time. And then tomorrow we will get started with the tile on the backsplash. So for this, I was told to use a foam brush and that way you don't get any brush strokes. And then you also just wanna do a quick, a light sand with like a 220 grit sandpaper once it's dry between coats. The luster that that added to it is so pretty compared to just the full raw wood. So this is kind of going to be what it looks like really, but we'll let this dry, give this a quick sand, do another coat, let it dry, do another sand, do a third coat, and then we should be good to go. And then I'm going to do the same to this one. All right, this is how those bar stools turned out. I feel like they totally look different now. Like they look way modern, even though they're different shape, they're different, you know, styles. One has obviously the back, these ones don't. I feel like they look like they're kind of a matching set, perfect for our island. Alright you guys, we are into day two at the kitchen. I'm like amazed at how different it looks with the under cabinet lighting. I just love it. Last night we were just really admiring the glow in here. It's like very ambient at night, but it really lights it up a lot during the day. And it really kind of just like showcases the countertops, which we love. And then of course, the stools. We've been using them, loving them. Today, our focus is the backsplash. We went for some different options and we actually shared that over on the vlog channel. And of course, we opted for the more intricate one, the one that's not just like laying flat. We are doing herringbone and this is like a marble tile. It's so pretty and we are going to do herringbone. We're also planning to not do any grout lines in it. We're just gonna have it stacked like that. I really love how clean that look is, but right now we have to kind of like prep everything out. So Kyle's, Literally, he's out there setting up a little folding table. He's grabbing his wet saw and we're gonna start figuring out exactly like how we're gonna have to cut these and hopefully it'll be a fairly smooth process, but you guys know we'll share it all along the way. Fingers crossed. So many boxes of tile. <laughs> and then this is the mortar. It's just pre-mixed, but we are going to be using this obviously to put on the wall and then we'll stick the tiles to that. And hopefully we won't have to grout anything, we'll just seal everything, but we'll kind of see how it goes.
All right, we entered into our first hiccup of the day, which is where Kyle's 12-year-old tile saw did not work when you plugged it in, so he went ahead and got a new one, and this is the first one that he got. You'll find out a little bit later on how this went, but for now it worked. Okay, so Kyle cut the tile and it worked great. Now we are basically starting to measure and we're already like just trying to figure this out. So as you know, we're doing the herringbone way and basically you want to like start in the center and we are starting in the butler's pantry because this is where we're going to hopefully not, but if there are any mess ups and you know, hard lessons, we want it to be in here versus in like the main part of the kitchen. So the reason that you want to center it on the wall is then the edges, like the pieces and sizes match up. Just it would, it would look weird if this looks like the whole thing is shifted an inch the wrong way. Yeah, that's it would true. Look weird. Yeah. And nothing, <laughs> nothing in this house is symmetrical. It's going to be the really right. hard part. Nothing lines up with anything else. Yeah. So I think we should just center it on the wall. And, and then, done. okay. All right. Sounds good. You used to be the one. The starring role in all my dreams. Lost in the never found. You made a stranger out of me. Who's on your phone? One minute you're here and the other you're gone. Where do we roam? I'm starting to wonder if I'm on my own. All right, so we prepped the wall, made sure it was all smooth. Basically, you want to like push these two together. There's like different ways to do it, but you're going to like push this down and push them so that they're all flush together up against your speed square. And then what we're going to do is cut like right here and do the yeah. same. Oh yeah, you'd, you'll push that a, down. You'd set a straight line onto this corner and this corner. Mm -hmm. And then you just run a mark there and cut that. And then this right. is what goes against the countertop. Yeah. And we are having to be like pretty specific with this because we don't have the leniency of adding grout because we are doing it like stone on stone and no grout lines in between. But, all right. So are we ready to like mark and cut? I am kind of scared to, but also we might as well, might as well just start. Yeah, the first cut is The first the cut's always the scariest. change quick change of plans <laughs> <Again. laughs> already we decided we are going to grout however we are going to do 1 16th so it's going to be like very minimal grout i've looked up quite a bit in groutless tile installations and you need to have rectified tiles and rectified means that these are within a certain tolerance of being perfectly square and if they're not then even if you do your best the variances and changes in the tile will make the pattern off over time mm -hmm. and and I've just been thinking about it thinking about it, thinking about it and right before we were gonna make the first cut I was like okay we're gonna do grout lines if you have grout lines if you get one a little bit off 45 you can kind of the next few tiles you can kind of make mm -hmm. you know you can kind of make up those angles a little right. bit you don't have much to work with but it would be a little bit of variance yeah and a little bit of giving that I think that we should do so I just changed my mind just now <laughs> we're gonna run and get one sixteenth inch spacers. Yeah, They're real be tiny. The spacers. Yep. So it'll be like this probably. It'll be real. They'll be pretty really thin grout minimal. lines. Yep. And we'll probably choose like a really light grout, so it almost just kind of blends. It'll in. just blend in. Yeah. It, it it's gonna be worth it. Yeah. It'll give us some help for sure. I was looking like a fool when I met Here's a little sneak peek of how things go down while we are working on house projects while the kids are out for summer. It's not perfect, but the boys are at an older age, which is really nice that they kind of just play. We take breaks for lunch, things like that. When they were a lot younger, like Kyle ended up doing a lot of these things and I was just kind of in and out here and there because I was with the kids a lot more. But now that they're older and a little bit more self-sufficient, we can get a lot more done in a lot less time, thankfully. And then this is actually what we're going to be using to create like the bottom grout line, but we're not using it in the traditional way, which would be like sticking it in that, sticking it in that way. Instead, we're just gonna lay it flat. 
So we'll just have these sitting down on the counter and then the tiles will all just sit along there and you'll get that tiny little area and then we'll be able to kind of grout that in. All right, so to start tiling, I'm going to be putting on this mortar and then I'll be using this trowel. It's a notch trowel and the reason you wanna do this is so you can stick the mortar on and then you kind of spread it like that and it creates little like divots in it. And then when you stick the tile on, you can squish it on and it like kind of creates suction to keep your tile in place until it dries. Alright, so we have been busy, busy bees over here. Hopefully you can see that. Oh, there we go. It is turning out so, so cool. We really only have like this little section. We are going to do the sides too, um, but we're kind of working on the outside edge. He's like measuring the bottom pieces and then I'm measuring the sides and the tops, telling him like where to cut. And then he is just going out one by one and cutting them and then bringing them back in. It's like a tedious process, but we have a good little flow going. We'll come visit Kyle and see his tile work. He's done a really good job. And the saw is really cool. So it is like, you can either do a regular straight edge or you can do a 45, which with herringbone, you literally only ever cut the 45s. So it's just made it awesome to be able to like get perfectly flat edges. Yes, it has. Because like his old saw over there, that he got that back in Georgia. <laughs> like so sad, Liam yeah. wasn't even born yet. <laughs> That's how old that thing is. But um, I think it was like thirty-five bucks at Harbor Freight or something. Yeah. With a quick sand to get any burrs off. Oh, and this is that oh, sanding block that perfect. I was telling you guys about several videos ago, but it's cool because you can actually like one side is a sponge so it's soft and the other side is a block and then you can actually like take the sandpaper off and get new sandpaper to add back onto it and it just I don't know it works really good and I love that it's able to be reused once it gets kind of worn down but okay I'm gonna go ahead and take these inside and continue on All right, you guys, welcome to day three of this house projects video. We are still working on the backsplash. This took quite a while to do here in like the Butler's pantry area, but really it's just anytime you're doing the first part of a project that you haven't done before. We haven't worked with herringbone before and it's been a while since we've done tile. Like we don't do it all the time, but I love how it's looking. And now we are going to just kind of continue on throughout the kitchen. We have not had a smooth morning already. It's like 1030 and we've been working at this all day and we haven't put a single tile on the wall because we've had some more hiccups. So when Kyle got out his tile saw yesterday, to start working on it he was like wow this does not work anymore which makes sense like he's had it since before liam was born back when we lived in georgia and it wasn't like the best quality one back then and so he got a different one and then yesterday it was like it kept binding up on him like all the tile dust i don't know it just wasn't like the best quality one so we cleaned it all up went back to home depot told them the story and they were like yeah that's fine like we can just exchange it for a different one so that's what we did so he's literally outside right now building the new tile saw <laughs> so we are in full-blown hiccups in this project but it'll be good it'll all be worth it i was just telling him about the fun hiccups we've been experiencing 
Oh, yeah. Kyle's loving it. Yeah, I'm having a great time. This is fun. This has been we like... We should totally do this again. We should do this again. We should... Same time yeah. next week. I can't wait until we do this again. It's going to be so good. <laughs> It'll be good once we get going. But yeah, now he has to build a second... A second saw. And it's 10.30 in the morning and we needed to start about three hours ago. Yeah. But... I guess we learned last yeah. time, so that's good. It is what it is. Yep. Yeah. Also, I did want to mention the big difference between this tile saw and the one that he had bought the previous day was that with this one, you actually are able to move the entire table. You're not having those little bits of tile get bound up or anything. It just keeps it going so smooth all day long. He said this one was like hands down the better machine. And if you work with tile very often, he would definitely suggest either renting one like this or buying one like this. So here we are just protecting the glass top stove with some towels before we go ahead and wrap the countertop in the brown paper. And also we're going along and just kind of scraping down any of the walls since we did have drywall damage from getting the countertops installed and specifically getting the old countertop backsplash taken off. And we're done. Just kidding, that's the butler's pantry. Oh, how I wish it went that fast. But no, there was hours and hours and hours and hours <laughs> to go until we were finished. But anyway, we started by finding the center of the stove and then we just kind of marked that up the wall. And then we placed our first tiles right in the middle and kind of moved out from there. And I personally like to add the mortar straight onto the wall, but then I also will back butter the tiles slightly. And then once I got a few places where I went, I would just press them really hard into the wall just to make sure to create that section and to make sure that they don't budge or anything as they dry. So while I'm working over here, Kyle is actually patching up the old security system. So he's like closed off all the wires and then he's just adding this brace right here and then he'll cut a piece of drywall so that we can tile over that. These outlet cuts were very annoying to measure, mark, and cut, but they did turn out pretty good. Thankfully, they were just very time consuming. Over in here, we are going to do the herringbone to the edge, but to keep this like a nice clean look, we are actually going to basically take one of the subway tiles and rip it down like this and then it will just um, kind of be like the end piece and we'll just stack that up right here and then we'll do the same thing like on this edge over here that is the plan for how we're going to kind of like end them really nicely and i think it'll look i think it'll look really nice so we're going to go ahead and put the end ones in because that's kind of where we're at here and then we'll continue on on this side i feel like it's going slow because it is it's taking forever. But we are making progress, so I just have to keep that in mind. This is why it's good to watch these kind of videos because this whole backsplash installation looks so quick and easy, so it kind of motivates you to do these kind of things. But in real time, this is taking us days and hours hunched over, pushing tiles up against the wall, cutting them all, measuring everything. But with all that being said, it is so worth it in the end. So watch us go through this process, get motivated, and go ahead and tackle it. But just know it's not actually this painless, but it is worth it. Oh my 
gosh, this is turning out so good. Obviously we still have to grout it and all that stuff and we'll do these side pieces, but that looks amazing. We just have to continue over here and then we'll move to the cocoa bar area. We're finally done with that back wall. So now Kyle is going to finish this. He's just been busy cutting tiles. So he's gonna go ahead and finish that drywall area and then prep this out so we can finish the final like stretch. And then we'll have to go back in the butler's pantry and actually do like the side walls cause yeah, we haven't done this yet. Back to the day that you went away. You said to see your family. But I ran into you yesterday and you never saw it coming, baby. I knew you knew what I thought. Or did you leave or not? You said that you meant to. Alright, it's like 620 and we ran into a pretty decent size hiccup. We just did not realize like how bad the drywall got messed up from getting the back the old like countertop backsplash piece off whenever we changed out our countertops. So Kyle might have to repair this drywall a little bit. It would just be like this. It wouldn't be like, you know, really yeah. like having to mud and tape anything, but just so it's just nice and supportive. This part right here. Yeah. Just take that and then maybe this. I can probably fill that. Yeah. But this, yeah, I think we probably this whole should. bottom part is shot. Yeah. So this was actually the next day we let the tiles go ahead and set, but since we chose real stone, we chose marble, we really needed to steal the backsplash so that it won't stain or anything and it'll just hold up for years and years. So the guy at the tile store said that this stuff works amazing and you only need a little, and don't quote me, but I wanna say he told Kyle that it lasts like 20 years or something. So it should theoretically last us a really long time. But basically you just roll it on, then let it sit for about three to five minutes and then wipe off any excess with a clean towel. And it was honestly amazing at what a difference it made and just how everything looked. It added so much luster to the tiles and I feel like it kind of ended up bringing everything to life. Finally, once we got the backsplash all sealed, we were able to pull off that brown paper and see the backsplash and counter together for the very first time, and we loved it. And actually, we were planning on grouting the backsplash and doing a few other house projects around the house, 
in this video, but this took days longer than expected, pretty much because we went with the herringbone style. So this is where we are going to end it for today, but we will be picking the grout color and grouting the backsplash over on the vlog channel a little bit later this week. So let us know what grout color you think we should go with. We could do something lighter than the backsplash. We could do something maybe tan so it kind of matches the color. We could do something a little darker and make it stand out. Let me know kind of what your thoughts are on that. And also, if you want to see a reminder of what this kitchen looked like before we moved in or see the rest of our home and how much it's changed over the two years that we've lived here, I am going to link our empty house tour right here on the right side of the screen. Oh my gosh, it's just hard to remember how it was before because so much has changed now. Also, we are decorating for summer here in next week's video, and I'm also going to be sharing some new recipes in that one, so stay tuned for that. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. Bye!